Welcome to Zenergy, the interactive podcast providing resources for building a better life. I am Zen Ashe. I'm your conduit, your coach, and your catalyst for that better life. A coach draws out hidden potential in the subject. A conduit provides a connection and a catalyst sparks change. So I am here today to connect my viewers and my listeners to Mr. Anthony Mitchell. Say hi to the people. Hello, how are you all doing? Nice to be here. And He's going to tell us about his life and he's going to tell us about what courage has meant to him because that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about courage and I think courage is not talked about enough because when I think about every single thing that I've done in my life that actually made an impact, whether it was going to college, whether it was uh, applying for a job, whether it was getting married, deciding to get pregnant, you know, everything you have that unknown and you have the fear of, oh, can I do this? Um, is it going to be too much? What if, what if, what if, what if? You have all these ideas that pop in your head and then you have to move forward. You have to, there was a book I read years ago called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. You know, so even if you're afraid, you have to decide that whatever is on the other side of that fear is more important to you than the fear. And uh, I've had to do that so many times in my life. Even starting this podcast, I had so many fears and nervousness and worry. You know, I just read a book recently called The Five Second Rule. Mm -hmm. And she was saying to, instead of saying you're afraid, say you're excited. You know, you're anticipating to kind of try to take some of that negativity out of it and try to frame it more positively. You know, so I thought, hmm, okay, maybe that would be something good. Because she was saying when you, when we have fear, sometimes we get into that fight or flight mode. Like we want to run away. Right. We just want to get away. Or we want to fight ourselves, fight other people. But if we can just see it as a more positive experience, it kind of brings down all those negative emotions and we can relax a little better. Um, so what do you think about courage and, and why it's important? Oh man, that is definitely a broad topic. Courage to me has been wild. I mean, every story in my life that I could talk about would have to been uh, the courage to keep going because um, just to give you one, um, having the courage to uh, work in a, in a warm environment. One particular, my first job working at a local supermarket growing up, I was born, as you know, with no sweat glands, rare genetic condition where I can't control my body temperature. So I have to manually be able to do that. And uh, being living in East Texas, a uh, small town, local supermarket, I started working there and um, I was um, I finally eventually hired and had to uh, push the you know shopping cart to the uh, customers. And sometimes it would be on the hottest day. You had to wear a bow tie, slacks, short sleeve collar shirt. And it was like uh, walking on hot coals on my feet for one. And, um, and my whole body just boiling. And it, I just, I had came to the, you know, the, the idea to just uh, being inside was always cool, but walking into one of the uh, uh, walk-in coolers in the, in the, you know, in the, in the back and whether it be the milk cooler, beverage coolers or the freezer just to bring my temperature down. And I knew going in that it was going to be tough. So I had to, I had to put on, I had to put on my courage robe and, and, and go for it. So, uh, courage to me means it just means a lot. You just got to keep going. You know, you don't know how far you can go, but uh, you just keep going because you're going to learn from it eventually, you know, at some point in time. So courage means that. Just keep going. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, getting into those situations where you feel like you're in over your head and mm -hmm. you have to just keep moving forward. You, you know, you can't go back. So you have to keep moving forward. And even though yeah. you know it's going to be difficult, you have to have that courage to, to believe in yourself and to believe that you have whatever is within you um, that you can accomplish. You know, I, like I said, I remember so many times, I remember when I was, um, I wanted to get out of the apartment I was in mm -hmm. and there was a, a little workshop on how to get financing. 
And I went to the workshop and I'm out in this foyer. There's this big, huge auditorium and you're walking down this hallway to the auditorium and all I see is couples, just couples, no single people at all. And for some reason that just made me feel like I wasn't in the right place, you know? And I was like, I'm a single woman. I got two kids. My kids were like six at the time. You know, I want to buy a house by myself with six, you know, two six-year-olds. I was like, ah. And then I was feeling all this fear walking down that hallway. And I was like, you know what? I know it's like living in an apartment. Mm -hmm. And I know what it was like as a kid growing up in a neighborhood and a house. And I want that for my children. And even though I was scared, I was scared of maintenance on the house the bills on the house that do i have good enough credit do i have enough saved up you know i'm gonna have to go by myself or with my kids to all these open houses and how long is it gonna take and am i gonna get denied all these things and i just finally said you know what if you want it you're just gonna have to go through the fear and just keep moving forward and and every every situation that i've ever faced where i had a decision it was like that you know it was that in between time you know in between where you are here and where you want to get you have that fear in the middle you know and just the courage to say okay i'm going to keep my goal in mind and i'm going to keep moving forward because it means that much to me, you know, and I can't imagine being in your situation where you have something that you have to deal with daily. A lot of us, courage is, for us is something sporadic, you know, we have a job interview, so we have to pump ourselves up for that. Or we, you know, we see somebody we want to ask out on a date, so we have to pump ourselves up for that. But it doesn't happen every single day, but it kind of sounds like with you, you had to kind of have courage to in a sense, just even leave your house, yeah. you know. If you play as a kid or as you get older to go out and, uh, of course, work at a job. And, uh, you know, I grew up, my, my father, he was he was definitely uh, strong on us, you know, getting a job and earning our own money and everything. You know, of course, he didn't, he didn't uh, expect us to be looking for an allowance all, you know, for our whole teenage life and until we moved out on our own or whatever. Of course, he wanted us to learn to, you know, earn your pay. And so having the, having that being raised up that way, you know, with the, you know, challenges that I had, you know, it just made it just a bit tough, bit tougher, you know, but, uh, you know, I was brought up in a faith-based, faith-based home as well. You know, you always pray, you pray about everything. And uh, it didn't take me very long in growing up to learn that prayer works, you know, prayer works. It, it really does, and and just going out and um, you know, like I said, pushing on. I pray for before I do anything, and that's what I say. Pray first, and then you go and, and then you go forward. I I agree on that. You know, um, I've moved away from the church, you know, but just getting closer to the idea of my ancestors and knowing that within me. I have a whole lineage of people that came before me. And when I feel inadequate, sometimes I think, oh, this is so little compared to what my grandparents went through, what my mother went through. You know, my mother grew up during segregation. My, my parents, mm -hmm. everyone in my family, my, my great uncles, my grandparents, my parents were all part of the civil rights movement. I've, I've protested, a lot of us have protested recently, but. I think I went to my first protest at 13. Um, so knowing that there are people in your background that face so much more than what you have, you know, it kind of gives me that, again, courage to say, I have within my DNA strength and, and I have some guts down in there that was given to me by the people that came before me who had it, you know, and even though I may not feel it, it's there. And if I have the faith that, you know, God has put in me, not only the things that, that are spiritual, but even the things that are intangible, like those, those inherited traits, you know, like the things, the lessons that my parents taught me and grandparents and all that. And just that can give me the courage to say, I can do this. 
I can handle it. I can move forward, especially since I'm not dealing with anything like what they dealt with. And if they could do it, if they could do it, I can do it. You know? you mentioned that too, because um, I mean, definitely your point there. I get that, but I also look at the challenge that I have with, with my sweat glands and everything. And I, and I have, I can't help but think about those that you know, for instance, that don't have any don't have any limbs or don't have any vision or don't have, you know, a lot of other things that's that a lot of more challenges and tougher challenges before them. I, I have to admit, the challenges I had were tough for me, you know, but I can look and, and see other people that go through so much more and I can't help but hopefully be able to inspire them and those who don't go through as much, maybe able to see through me and then see through others that hopefully that'll push them because I mean, you mentioned earlier about uh, the challenges period. Okay, I had my I had the challenge of dealing with not having any square glands, but then uh, some of the, there's a lot of the symptoms that come with it. You know, it it affects a lot of things. Uh, they were saying that I'd have some learning disability, and I always looked at that as if you it took me a little longer to pick up on things. Some people can just get it and run with it. You know, sometimes I had to study a little harder. You know, and things of that nature. So I always felt like everybody, a lot of people had to do that. So when they when they uh, mentioned that as being one of the symptoms of my condition, uh, having a learning disability, you know, even finishing school when I was 20 years old, you know, I, I, I left to go to college. <laughs> I left my junior year to get my GED to go to college. I wanted to go to college. I loved school. I enjoyed school. I was a little further behind than some of my uh, uh students that were in my class range, but I, uh, <clears throat> but so being behind a little bit, that actually kind of played a little bit with my head and everything. And I said, well, I'm gonna just go ahead and get my GD and go to college. So, you know, but just dealing with the other different challenges in your life, you know, and I'm sure everyone has, a lot of people have more than just one challenge, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's usually a uh, uh, multiple thing, <laughs> you know, rather some may think small, it may be big to you, and uh, small to me, uh, small to you and big to me. So, you know, that those are the things that I think about that kind of help me to grow. And I know there is, as you mentioned, your ancestors went through so much more than we had to go through. So why can't we do this? So th that, that definitely goes through my mind when I, uh, when I approach different things in my life. Well, I, I, I hear that too. And, and, you know, for me, you look around you and I feel grateful many times. You know, I had both my parents growing up. I had, I saw images of people who were married. Um, that was a norm to me to be married. Um, there are people who don't know their father, who've never seen a married couple who, you know, there were things I had, I may not have been, may not have been born with a silver spoon in my mouth. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But I had uh, parents who valued education. I had a lot of, um, encouragement i didn't have parents who said um you can't and you won't i had parents that said you will and you better you know <laughs> and you're gonna be twice as good because they're gonna think that you're half as good you know that's the kind of of push that i had um and so sometimes you know there's that idea okay i have to put my big girl panties on and pull myself up you know by my bootstraps in a sense because I have people expecting things of me. And even though I may be scared um, or I may feel inadequate or overwhelmed or whatever, not only do I have the people who came before me expecting things of me, but I have children, I have grandchildren. And if I want them to succeed, if I want them to face their fears, then I need to be an example of that. And I can't be talking about, well, you can, you can, but I'm not you know, and I'm making excuses for myself. And, and every year I try to set higher and higher goals for myself and challenge myself even more in the areas where I haven't succeeded in the past, try to work on those areas so that I can become the best person I can be. And, and it is scary to change because we know what the status quo is like. You know, we know what it's like to be where we are, but that whole idea of, okay, I got to sacrifice. How hard is that going to be? you know, to get to where I want to be. Or even, I'm going to mention this because I know that you've written a book. Now, I 
write a lot of poetry and I write a lot of essays. That's short writing. And I've written a book that hasn't been published yet because I'm still editing it. You know, I'm still in that process. But to write a book is a massive undertaking. You know, everybody thinks, well, I could write a book. Oh, will you sit down and try it one day? You know, <laughs> because it's a lot more than you think. It's, it's, it's discipline. Yeah, it and it's that focus on, okay, this is what I want to say. Did I actually say it? Is this clear? It's, you know, going back and looking at things, planning things out. It's a lot involved. And so I know that you wrote a book and that takes some courage too, because when you're writing, you're pouring your heart out, especially when you're telling your own story. Right. And, and what are people going to think? That's the fear. What, what are people going to even read this? Are people going to buy this? Am I wasting my time? All these thoughts, you know, these fears going through your mind. So as an author, how did you deal with that fear? How did you find the courage to, to put your story out there? Wow. True story. When I finished college in 1992, <laughs> I was talking to one of my classmates and I said, you know, knowing the things that I had went through and everything. And I said, you know, I'm hoping that I can encourage. I think I can. I know I can encourage somebody with my story. I want to tell my story. And he said, oh, man, what are you doing that for? This is one of my, one of my classmates. You know, only celebrities, athletes, today, you know, and I was like, no, no. So 92, fast forward. After writing my journal and, 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 you know, keeping us, you know, up to date on some of the things that, you know, the challenge I went through in my life, 2012 <laughs> was when I finally came to the point, okay, and like a little few, a month or so before that, I was still kind of like, you like you say, a little nervous and everything, and, and part of that was nervousness uh, along with writing my journal, but um, someone told me a long time ago, you just got to do it, you know, don't expect all your I's to be dotted. Don't expect all your T's to be crossed. Just do it. So Googling some of the information I need to know, and I did it, you know, and I, I feel so good. It was such a major accomplishment, I feel, you know, just to tell my story, you know. And at the time, of course, which I'm sure, you know, those that really enjoy writing and really want to just tell their story, I didn't care if anybody bought it. You know, most of the people that knew me growing up knew some of my story, but once I grew up and moved out on my own and lived, moved away, there's more stories than things that I had to go through. So they don't know that, but they knew my childhood or some, a good portion of them. But just writing my story, that, that to me was uh, uh, such a massive enjoyment, you know? And um, so yeah, just going forward fast, push you forward and it may not take you three months it may not take you 60 days and you know and hopefully you can remove some of those uh insecurities and and not knowing what should i do with this part of the book the editing and i grew up in a a, a lot of family uh, members and, and and relatives that were educators you know so we had i had the uh you know always had that that ear and that eye to to check over some of my things but yeah, just going forward and just pushing on with it. And uh, never intended for it to last that long. Believe me, I didn't. I never intended for it. But, you know, you go through things in life and you say, okay, I'll come back to it. You know, just, you know, trying to make a living. And I mean, all of those things just kind of pushed it aside for a minute. And, and before I knew it, you know, all those years had went by. So, but, uh, and that necessarily doesn't take, you know, wouldn't take everybody that long. But Hey, you know, just just go for it. I just knew that the time that it took was uh, just an opportunity for me to tell more of the things that I had been through, and 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 that was the, the biggest thing. And that more learning, you know, more teachings. So it was it was a uh, it was a ride, but yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Well, that's awesome, and I I can relate to that because I used to write when I was uh, in college, in high school, even younger than that. And then um, I got married, had kids, and I didn't really have, I had time in a sense, but it wasn't really a priority. Right, right. And when I um, did do some writing and I tried to get published, just small pieces, I got so many rejections. I mean, I had a whole binder full of <laughs> rejections. <laughs> and at the time I, wasn't um I wasn't of the mindset I am now 
which is you have to, it's a, it's a numbers game. That's the mindset I have now. It's a numbers game. Uh, you have to keep going till you get the yes. No matter how many no's you have to go through. But at the time I was taking those no's personally and I was, uh, I had fear when I would send out my writing, I have fear of where they're going to say no, where they're going to say no. But now I don't even have that fear. I don't think like that anymore. Um, I just feel like it's a numbers game and you just keep submitting until you get the yes. So I think that sometimes courage um, comes from changing your mindset because when you stop focusing on the reactions that you're going to get right. and you start focusing on the process, the process of writing for me is, is powerful and putting it out there into the universe and just believing that it's going to find the right channel when it finds the right channel it'll flow you know what i'm saying um and just believing that that's going to happen and no matter how long that process could take if it takes two submissions four submissions ten submissions whatever um just having that faith is not something that i had before you know but now i do so I think that sometimes it's a mindset change and, and it's, it's a, sometimes I feel like you have to let go. Yeah, you do. You know, there's, I, I have been told <laughs> that I can be controlling, uh, which I don't know if that's the right word, but I have been told that I can be controlling. And mm -hmm. I think this past year, especially with COVID, I think a lot of us have had to learn, we have to let go and we have to put, a lot of things in the hands of someone bigger than us and just go with right. the flow and right. just know that we don't have we don't have all the answers we don't have all of the 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 knowledge of what's going to happen but we have enough to face today and we have enough to get through it and so i've had to just write it submit it and let it go and whatever happens, happens. And not be so, ooh, is it, am I going to win it, you know, you know so I, don't, I don't need to do all that. I just need to write it, let it go, and, you know. With your permission. Sure. This, this particular topic, I like to, because I write a, I write poetry as well, as you know. Ah, okay. And I have a poem that kind of touches on what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, okay. It's, called, uh, it's called Words of Wisdom. Ah, Words of okay. Wisdom. Words of Wisdom. And um, here we go. Learning from those who bless me with their knowledge and all that God has taught them in their journey. Although there's much more for me to learn in life, having faith in God leaves no room for worry. Challenges are some may call obstacles in my path. I rise to the occasion to move forward nonetheless. I've seen, I've been asked to learn from the mistakes of others as well as those of my own I pray to never forget. Waking every morning with a smile on my face expecting something good to happen to me. And all that I go through any given day, good or bad, accepting it all as a blessing and opportunity. Loving those who strike out against me for no reason, wasted time trying to figure out why. Of course, it crosses my mind briefly, a moment of prayer as I close my eyes. God loved everyone in this world and beyond. Still many were against him violently. So how could I expect to live here daily? and no one say a negative word against me. Words of wisdom. And oh, I, that point you. came about from, like you say, those that, you know, not knowing everything and not worrying about what someone else is gonna say, learning from those who, you know, went before us, whether it be family or, you know, or someone that's close to you. I mean, that poem there is something that actually pushed me and encouraged me as well. You know, and uh, hey, I'll, I'll recite it every opportunity I feel with that it needs to be fit with permission, of course. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. Well, what know. is the title of your book and where can people find it? The title of my book is titled No Sweat. And I have a thing with that title. Of course, I was born with no sweat glands and um, a rare genetic condition that uh, only one out of 17,000 children are born each year with it, but it's still uh, it's still a lot more, I believe, over the years, because that statistic has changed over the years. But I was born with this condition and uh, going through the challenges that I had to go through in my life and everything, 
but also I, I wanted that title to represent those who actually have challenges that they're going through in their life. I, I would hope that they would approach them as them being no sweat. You know, you just move on and you go. And I have a, a, a thing that I always feel that if you, uh, you are a no sweat soldier, mm. that's, that's my slogan that you are a no sweat soldier and uh, you approach your goals as if there were no sweat. Me in particular, I approach them as well, but also I approach life and dealing in warm conditions and everything as it, with no sweat glands and that pushes me. So my book is available at Amazon. You know, uh, of course they can reach out to me you can get an autograph copy, but uh, you can go to amazon.com and you can find my book there most definitely. And how would they reach out to you? What, what, where's your social media? How would they reach out to you? Sure. Uh, I have a Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn as well. My Instagram is time to shine 68. Just said the spell time to shine and the number is six, eight. And my Facebook, I have three pages there. Anthony Mitchell, author, Anthony Mitchell, author inspires and no sweat shop where a lot of my products, my book and my t-shirts that I do with my poetry and phrases that I have to hopefully inspire others. My Twitter is not over for me yet. So all letters, not over, but the number four, me yet. And uh, that's my Twitter and LinkedIn, Anthony Mitchell. Uh, you can hit me there. But um, yeah, so any way they want to reach out to me, they can reach me there in my, in my website, uh, Anthony Mitchell. You can go to my website, is No Sweat Shop, and they can find my uh, all my products there as well. Awesome. So what inspirational message do you have for people? So I know you said you want people to face their goals with no sweat, like as if it's no sweat. Um, so we've been talking about courage. So what kind of message do you want to leave with the people about courage? Yes. Understanding the passion of persistence is my talk topic, which uh, touches on courage. You know, you understand your passion and what you're really passionate about and just be very persistent about it. And that will, I feel, will overcome your, uh, you know, your fears as well and give you that courage that you need but you just have to bury, you have to, you know, embrace your passion, understand it, and be very persistent with it. And, and, and things, the doors will open, keeping God first. You know, I, you know, you can't, I feel that you can't do nothing without giving him his, his praise, most definitely, most importantly. But that would be my, my encouragement for those. All right. Well, thank you for that. And so I have been talking with Anthony Mitchell, author of No Sweat, and he has merchandise on No Sweat Shop um, with his poetry and his merch that has inspirational phrases on it. Um, I also have merch. I also have books on my website. So my name is Zen Ashe, and you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, Z-E-N-A-S-E. Uh, the podcast Zenergy can be found on all podcasts and platforms. And we are here to give you food for thought, give you tools for inspiration and for a better life, you know, fuel for your mind, body, and soul. So I hope that you were inspired that no matter what your challenge is, whether it's having no sweat glands or whether it's, you know, asking that girl out on a date, you know, that you can look at things as if it's no sweat, as if you can handle it, as if you can move forward through it, you know, look to your inner strength look to your spiritual power, look through, look to your ancestors who have been through way more than you and, you know, have come out on the other side, look to all those things to realize that you have what's in, you have what you need it within you already. Kind of like the Wizard of Oz story, you know, the, 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 the lion, the cowardly lion did have, he did have some bravery. He just didn't know it. He just had to tap into it. And sometimes we tap into those things when we realize that there's other people that we really want to um, to to shine for, you know, whether it's our family, our friends, or the people that are looking up to us, like our children. You know, we want to be our best for them as well as our best for ourselves. So, thank you for joining me, and may you walk thank you. in synergy. Thank you. Thank you.
My name is Zenar Shea, and I have a weekly podcast called Zenergy, which is fuel for the mind, body, and soul. And this is the Zenergize Your Life Goal Setting Package, Volume 1. It comes with the workbook, a journal, stickers, a bookmark, tabs, and a QR code where you can find my podcast. And inside this workbook, you're going to have 16 different principles. The first one I'm going to show you mine is abundance. You have a place to put pictures that inspire you of role models, also pictures of goals that you want to create, goals, journal prompts, meditations, affirmations, all kinds of things to help you focus on this principle to better your life. And like I said, there's 16 principles. So this is a $15 package that comes with all of these things I've shown you, $21 with shipping and handling, and you can get it at laughsandlyrics.com. So Zenergize Your Life with me. Thank you.